Yeah! The one year anniversary of not uploading a video at all. What? It's not. The hardest thing is choosing what your first review should be after a break. I mean, I didn't want to just do another dating sim, and I wanted to show something a little different, so I went out and bought Love Hina games on PS1. Then I realized you needed a pocket station for that, so then I got thinking, what other PS2 and PS1 peripherals have I not looked at in a long time? And then it hit me. The eye toy. Sure, we have the Kinect, the Wii, and the Move cameras now, but nothing beats going back and looking at the camera that was my first experience with motion gaming. But then, what game would I play? Surely there isn't an anime-based game that only uses the eye toy, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Cardcaptor Sakura on PS2 is just that game, so now prepare for a few minutes of seeing me wail around in front of a camera. Before that though, a little backstory on Cardcaptors. Cardcaptor started in Japan in 1996 and followed a 10 year old 4th grader named Sakura on her quest to retrieve a set of magical cards that are set free. Each card has a magical persona and must be defeated in order to retrieve it using other cards that they've captured. Along the way Sakura meets Kero, or Cerberus, or whatever the hell, the guardian of magical cards, Tomoyo who has a fetish for dressing her up in battle costumes and recording her, Sauron, who also captures cards and is Sakura's love interest, even though she is totally 10, and other randoms who don't really matter in this game, but have important parts in the actual story. So as there are 52 cloud cards, unless you read the manga in which there is only 19, you can imagine what you would need to do in this game. That's right, collect all the cloud cards. And how do you do that? Well, for the only thing people ever use the iToy for. Mini games! Plugging that eye toy back in, a flood of memories returned to me with things like what the hell were they thinking flooding my mind. Having to hold your hand over text options and buttons and jiggling it around to get a response was not always, well, responsive. There are text box elements, putting in your name, for I am known as Aku, and the holy fact that you can proceed through text with a controller. Otherwise my arms would have fallen off, waving around like an idiot. You can proceed through text with a controller, but all options and menus have to be accessed through Maniac Waving, so also keep that in mind. The game is based around a number of mini-games, with victory in each netting you a cloud card. Now, don't get excited, I don't mean there's 52 mini-games. I mean there is about 7 or 8, and the rest of the cards are gathered through cutscenes in the main menu. Each game is preceded by a little cutscene to set up the scenario. You are asked to stand in the outline so that you are in peak position and then you begin to fail. Or at least in my case where the room is too dark to distinguish me from the background effectively. The room is actually pretty bright but the eye toy is pretty bad at picking up light unless you do what I do later on. Each game comes with an explanation of what to do as well but they're all pretty self-explanatory. The first game is a simple smack absolutely everything on the screen game. You need to whack as many pink evil eyed bunny bugs or whatever they are, the jump card I think, as fast as possible while avoiding Kero who has decided to hang out with them. Next up you need to take two photos of yourself in a happy and sad face for the next game. Let's ride in our candy powered flying machine. Sakura and you are off to fight evil forces and the only thing standing in your way is a murder of crows and your insatiable need to eat floating candy and cake. You use the icons to have Sakura move around the screen and avoid the crows until you fight the, bo the boss. Next you have the dumbest game of the bunch where Sakura just keeps walking and you have to move a wheel which rotates the world around her. It turns out Sakura doesn't move at all. She stays in place and the world is just moved around her. I could never get through this one mostly because it's the hardest to control, requiring the stupidest moves to get any kind of response. Even with good recognition from the eye toy. But I'm sure I'll finish it someday, 
Nothing is impossible. Not if you can imagine it. Next up is a standard pinball game, where you have two layers of bumpers and you just have to rack up as many points as possible. There are plenty of jokes I could make about putting balls in guys' faces here, but I'm not going to go down that path. Now, only you can catch as many lights as possible. Well, catch more than your boyfriend at least, because that's the aim of the game. Catch the lights, and send them into the magic circle. Catch more than your opponent, and you win. Catch as many as you can with a Pikachu on your head, and feel like a master. Though, if you just wave the camera in front of a light, you'll win regardless. It was then that inspiration struck. What if I held a light in my hand? Genius! Totally responsive after that. I highly recommend it. Next up is a gambling game, where there's no strategy either, you're just hitting a button as much as possible in the time limit so that you hit the most chances of getting three in a row and catching some coins. Crane game where I actually win things? Impossible! When you hit the crane, it automatically hovers over the nearest target and you just have to keep it in the green until the crane reaches the drop zone. I think saving Kuro is the win condition, but it may just be about how many points you can manage to get. Finally, we move on to the only two-player game we have, Memory. There are six cards, but only two of them match at any given time. You need to flip over two to gain a point. In one-player mode, you compete against the really dumb Caro until the last ten seconds where he becomes a god of guesses. And in two-player, you just have to share a screen. Not overly exciting, but it does what it needs to do. What is your prize for winning these games? Well. Cloud cards, for one, but also the chance to get your photo taken with the 10-year-old in a fabulous outfit. You can save up to 30 pictures on your memory card to show off to your friends of you hanging out with your anime companions after your magical journey. Make sure you get some good pics though, since it will probably be the last time you see those friends. That's pretty much the game. There are some extras, like browsing the cards you've collected with synopsises, an album, and a data book of how fast you kick those bug bunny asses. There is also an event area where you can answer things correctly, you gain more cloud cards, though I suck at that, so I only gained one or two, but this is where you gain most of the rest. So the ultimate question is, is it a good game for what it's worth? Well, if you can play in a well-lit area and hold a light, it's pretty responsive. While the games are simple, most of them keep you amused for a little while, but ultimately there isn't enough here to warrant this over this over something like iToy Play or any of the other minigame filled iToy games. If you like card characters, you might like the challenge of collecting all the cards yourself. Or if you want to have a retro trip to the good old days of motion gaming in 2003, then this might be worth a look. Plus, it's not like you can download it in a ROM form or anything, it's genuinely an experience you can only have in the real world. Otherwise, just stick with your Kinect Star Wars. I will say this though, if you really want a game to work you out, play this in a darker room. This is, this is a real training for becoming a card captor. Blue, 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 blue,